guys, Jenna here, and I have an exciting announcement. Four years ago, I downsized and built my own tiny house, and I traveled around in that tiny house over 25,000 miles for an entire year. Well, now it's time for me to have a new project. Behind me you see my 1972 Hunter Compact Junior vintage trailer. My plan is to renovate it into my own little traveling tiny abode. I had a lot of fun traveling with my tiny house, but it was also really expensive. I found this vintage trailer and it only weighs 800 pounds, compared to my tiny house which weighs 10,000 pounds. And sure, it's only 60 square feet and compared to my gargantuan tiny house which is 165 square feet, but I only really plan on using this for camping trips. So if you can believe it, I'm downsizing yet again, and I'm getting rid of some of the creature comforts that I've gotten used to in my tiny house in order to live in this for weeks or even a month at a time. Anyway, I wanted to show you guys what it looked like before the transformation. I've done a little bit of work on it, but before I get too far, I wanted to show you the inside and the outside of the vintage trailer. We've already done a little bit of work on it. I've already done some painting here. But um, it has the original stove top. It's a three burner stove. The original sink is in here. There is a tiny toilet. It's a chemical toilet. So the smallest that you can get, basically, and it fits perfectly in this little cupboard. I think eventually, I'll put it on like a rollout so it's a little easier to get in and out, but that's the idea. I used one when I was in the van in the UK and it seemed to work out fine. For most of the time I was using public restrooms and I feel like that's what I'll mostly be using when I'm camping in the trailer or doing some wild toilet use as well. But uh, you know, for emergency purposes, it's nice to have a little compact toilet like that. So on this side I have my Dometic refrigerator which was sponsored. It's going to come out on a slider and it will open just like this. Very simple, small refrigerator, but fits perfectly in the space that we have. Originally they had a refrigerator, it took up this entire space here and it really wasn't efficient so now we've gained all this space and I don't really know what I'm going to do with it yet. I've already started decorating it as you can see with these cool plastic um, tiles. A lot of people use these on ceilings to decorate. but. I thought it'd look kind of neat in here and then I'm thinking I'm just going to put in some shelving and create more storage because one thing that this vintage trailer really doesn't have is a lot of storage. In here, which this isn't actually attached so I'll just take it off, <laughs> so it's just a couple of bin areas. I think I'll replace these with some cute looking bins. So this will be the closet and then I'm thinking this will be the pantry storage. You can see our flooring needs to be replaced. Let me show you what I'm gonna do there. We got these cool panels. They're vinyl, really lightweight, but they look kind of like wood. They're gonna be easy to clean. And they won't get all scratched up, so we're just gonna put those throughout. One great thing about tiny houses and vintage trailers and any small space is that you can floor the entire thing for less than 100 bucks. So you can sit a lot of people in here. And then there's a table that screws into this hole. When you're not using the table and you're ready to go to bed at night, you just put the table here on these two little platforms and we have some extra cushions and this becomes the bed. Now the bed is only about six feet long, so if you're taller than six feet, you know, your feet will hang off a little bit or you have to curl up, but that's kind of part of the fun. I mean, this is a 60 square foot trailer, so. Another thing that really drew me to this trailer was of course the pop top. I 
I love that I get extra headroom in this trailer. My boyfriend is six foot five. We did a van trip together through the UK just a few months ago and he could never stand up inside of the van. So we pretty much knew that van life wasn't for us unless we were gonna do a pop top van. Well, that got me thinking, what about a pop top trailer? You can usually buy them for a lot cheaper than you can a van because it's essentially not a vehicle, it's a trailer. So this is the original system here, which we haven't replaced yet. And the way it basically works is it's locked into place right now, but if I take it out on either side, and then you slide these out of position, and they come down just like that. It's not too heavy, but it's a little clunky as you saw. And then for me, actually pushing it up is a little difficult because I'm not very tall. So you get that in the position and then you lock it into place. And you lock that into place somehow and it works. We've already replaced the brackets on this end with pistons and they're a lot easier to use. So all I have to do is pull really hard. Or not really that hard. And then this will actually lock it into place. But when I wanna have it pop up, all I have to do is unlock it and it actually goes up on its own. <laughs> When we place them on the other side, this will actually lift a couple more inches. So as you can see, we have some slack here in the canvas and we're hoping to get a few more inches of headroom in here. Another thing I'm really excited for is decorating the ceiling with something. So I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do yet. I did buy this cool looking wallpaper. So I think I might decorate it with that for now. But I don't know, I've also thought about decals, maybe putting a map up there. Over on this side, I'm thinking about uh, replacing this ugly vinyl with a chalkboard so that this can be a functional space where we can draw. I have a propane heater. It works, so that's great, but it's kind of in the way here in the middle of the floor. I feel like I'm gonna trip on it. The truth of the matter is, we're not gonna be sleeping in here that often in winter, so I don't know if I want even a heater this small taking up space. But one great thing is that the propane has already been pump, uh, piped to here and it's working. So if I do want to replace it with some other propane heater, I can do that pretty easily. Or maybe if I want to put in a water heater in the future, a propane water heater, I already have the line piped, so that's great. It does not have a shower and it does not have hot water. And I think I'm okay with that. I'm gonna keep this relatively simple. Although I have been considering buying a portable hot water shower that I could use outside when I'm off-grid camping. So if you guys have any suggestions for products like that, I'm definitely on the lookout. You can see our freshwater tank is right here and our gray water tank is right over there. So that was pretty nice. It's already been done for us and the plumbing has already been piped to the sink. And like I was saying, the propane is already piped to this heater. So that was all done by the previous owner. And that all works. The off-grid water system works with the hand pump sink. So the off-grid sink operates by hand pump like this. It's not full right now, otherwise water would be coming out. And then this operates when we're connected to a hose. So this is pretty much empty space right now. It could be used for storage, but I think I'm gonna use half of it for the Humless solar um, battery that I'll be getting sponsored. So that'll go over here, and then over here will be just extra storage for us. This is the original color, and this thing is more than 40 years old. There's some marks on it, just from age, so I think I will give it a new paint job. Whether I change the color or not, I'm not really sure yet, but I do want it to be bright. I also want to install an awning on the back, maybe a vintage style awning. I think that'll make it look really cute. This thing lasted over 40 years without having a scratch on the windows. I've had it for about a month and I've already broken two out of the four windows. That's half. I guess I'm not very gentle when I'm in there doing construction. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to replace those windows and maybe even replace the entire front door because the auto glass places I've talked to so far don't even wanna touch it. But it's got me thinking, wouldn't it be cool to make a custom wood front door that maybe I could put a porthole window in? That would look pretty snazzy. Half of the system is on 12 volt, half of it's on 110, which means I need to rewire it all and make sure that the entire trailer, which is only 60 square feet, works either off-grid or on-grid, depending on if I'm using my solar or if I'm plugged into shore power. Now, a lot of people are gonna ask, why didn't I just go with a new trailer? Why would I get an old trailer? 
Honestly, the main reason is aesthetics. I want to renovate it and make it new and make it my own, just like I did my tiny house. And it gets a lot of attention. People think this thing is really cute. It has that uniqueness that a tiny house has, but in a much smaller and lightweight package. This summer, I plan on taking this trailer on a road trip all the way from Washington to Illinois. So get used to seeing this little guy. He's not going away. I haven't come up with a name for the vintage trailer yet, so maybe you guys can help me with that comment what you think we should call it. Thanks for tuning in this week. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos, so make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Let's keep this going, and I will see you guys next time.